what is going on guys welcome to another video and as this video is titled it is another my experience video today we're talking about this guy right here being a little reclusive and that is my six line wrath so uh, I'm sure many of you guys um, have kept six line wrath um, if you haven't um, it's a great fish really good hunter uh, wrasses are renowned for uh, being great parasite and pest controllers um, they do this all day they browse around and they pick at the rocks grabbing any little pests uh, flatworms whatever it may be um, that are lingering on our coral and our uh, rockscape and glass and just generally in our aquarium so I know uh, many people have positive things to say about the six line wrasse and some have very very negative things to say about the six line wrasse so I, I, I am just sharing my experience um, this is the only one that I've kept it's been with me wow it's going on two years now that I've kept this six line wrasse so Let's just get into the specs of the six line RAS. All of my specs are coming from Live Aquaria. That's where I get all the specs on my experience videos. Um, it's just very easy to access and you guys can also follow up on there as well. So liveaquaria.com. So the care level is easy. Temperament, semi-aggressive. Um, the color form, this is mine, but they're generally around a blue, green, orange color. As you see right here. Uh, they get to about three inches. Uh, they're originally from Fiji, Kenya, and Maldives. I, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. And um, max tank size is about 30 gallons. So mine is currently sitting in a 40 gallon system, as you see right here. At the moment, I have very minimal coral. I am working on my system. Um, as you can see, I was battling some very very heavy uh, green air algae um, and it's on its way out so look out for that video when it comes out but my experience with this guy awesome fish 99% um, of my fish I've had no issues with uh, compatibility with my six line wrasse um, the main fish that I've seen him have any bit of issues with are other wrasses um, wrasses can be very territorial um, and actually my orange skunk clowns which are actually hiding right now and that's the reason they're hiding every time my six line wrasse comes near my orange skunk clowns they're probably hiding under the rock um, let's see if I can find them no they're there they are yeah they're hiding under the rock um, they claim the top of this rock where this anemone is um, that's their anemone I know it's tiny but um, that's that's their anemone and this six line is like a shark to them um, it really generally only bothers the um, female skunk clown and not really the male and the reason I think for that is because the female will very aggressively uh, protect the anemone while the male is just kind of there um, trying to back her up so as you can see the male comes up and he he can hang out up there with almost no problems the female, as of late, uh, is just current, like currently hiding under the rock, uh, trying to avoid this six-line wrasse. Um, and I feel like the main reason is the female, while protecting the anemone, has started kind of a turf war with the six-line. And because she showed aggression towards my six-line, my six-line in return now shows aggression to her. So now they go back and forth. Um, looks like the six line pretty much has won. The female kind of just shelters under the rock as of now while, you know, the six line um, just, you know, <laughs> parades its territory. These guys will eat just about anything. Uh, I have no issues feeding them um, flakes or frozen or um, pellets if they can manage the pellets. They get along with both my other clowns and all my other fish. Matter of fact, I've actually seen a very unusual behavior from him when I introduced this guy right here. This is a 
uh, Caribbean sharp nose puffer and I will do a video on him eventually um, once I, uh, I'm more used to him and know his habits a bit more. But as soon as I introduced that fish into the system, the six sign kind of recognized it and backed off. Uh, I don't know if it's like it's recognizing the sharp nose as sort of another predator. It's kind of showing some type of submissiveness towards the sharp nose puffer. But other than that, uh, he doesn't shy away from any other fish. Um, but he also doesn't bother any other fish. Uh, he doesn't bother my long nose hawk, my other clowns, uh, my goby my two goldies. He doesn't bother anyone else except for my female orange skunk clown. And I find that very unusual, but I believe it's just due to aggression. They're not one of those wrasses that sleep in the sand. Uh, six lines will generally either sleep under a rock or in a rock. I have very uh, porous rock, as you can see, um, with large holes, and he generally finds a hole to sleep in. Um, I will explain one or two things that I've noticed with my six line though. As you saw there, swam by the male orange skunk clown with zero issues. Um, the main thing that I've found um, that's uncomfortable is the six line wrasse. At a certain time, they will go to sleep. Uh, I'm not currently sure what time mine, is, mine does, but pretty much lights out. These guys will find their place and they will immediately find cover and go to sleep. Now, when they do that, it's almost like they go into like a trance. Um, they will go to sleep and that's it. If you were to come uh, maybe an hour or so into their sleep routine, two hours, and you flip on the lights, at some point, this wrasse will wake up. And when it wakes up, it wakes up in a daze. I don't know if this is just my RAS. I've experienced this with this RAS over the last two years. Um, so I try not to turn my lights on out of schedule. But if I turn the lights on while it was sleeping, this RAS will literally just swim around the tank, knocking into everything. And I mean everything. Bumping into the walls, um, into the sand, pretty much just in a full daze. So try if you can to not startle your six lines while they are asleep um, or while they are on a sleep schedule because they can very easily uh, swim out of control into maybe a power head or something and really hurt themselves so um, if you have one or if you plan on getting one um, try to keep you know your lights to a routine um, during the day whether your lights are on or not they seem to have an internal clock and they will generally uh, be okay but at night don't turn your lights on based on what I have noticed but other than that it's such a beautiful fish I know some people have had a very extreme aggression with six lines um, and have removed them from their systems due to that but every fish and I've gone through quite a few fish um, in and out of this system from wrasses, well, I've only kept one other, two other wrasses in here, um, but from wrasses to angels to dwarf angels, never had an issue with any of my dwarf angels. Um, hawkfish, clowns, other clowns, um, as you saw, my pufferfish, um, and never had any real issues. So just do your research, maybe talk to some other people with some experiences with six lines and other species. Um, of fish and that should give you a good idea as to how they will react to those fish in whatever conditions they are in now I don't know if this is due to size as you can see in my tank is not overly large it's a 40 gallon tank which is a very tiny tank in the grand scheme of uh, a reef and um, I have no issues with her or him whatever it is I have no issues with my six line wrasse um, with all the changes I've done to the tank, changing the rockscape, changing power heads, uh, flow patterns, lighting, um, you know, coral, you know, no issues. It won't pick out any coral or anything like that. Um, so definitely if you're considering one, I, I would say get one. Um, you, you probably won't go wrong with them. They're cheap, they're around $20, uh, $25 or so, and you can pretty much find a small to medium or large six-line wrasse just about anywhere in the hobby. Um, 
I don't know how they compare to let's say a four line RAS. Um, I have yet to keep one, but they are on my list. And as soon as I get one, or if I get one, I will give you guys an insight to that. So let me pause right here, get some food out, and let's see if we can get this guy to eat for you guys. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and feed these guys um, some flakes. This is actually mixed. Um, it's gonna, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's all types of flakes in there. Maybe there's about four types of flakes. I just use an acrylic rod, dip it into the tank. Uh, so this might not be the best way to do this. And I dip it into my container. It comes out like that, and then add it to the water column. I'm not gonna feed too much because I fed these fish earlier today. Um, of course, right now the six line is actually just feeding in the back of the tank. It's not exactly what I was going. There it goes. Um, loves its flakes. Loves um, to eat. Um, frozen. I feed a mixture of um, LRS. time observe the fish for about 10 20 30 minutes if you have any suspicions that something doesn't look right with the fish go ahead and pass on it another opportunity more than likely will come so support your local your local fish stores um, you know pick some healthy fish give this fish a try i don't believe you'll be disappointed thank you guys for watching the video you guys have a good one.